After a few tough years, the Google Pixel came back strong, with a phone that shocked the tech world. But the iPhone 13 Pro has a very proven track record as an impressive phone with incredible cameras and ecosystem support. So which one is actually better? I've been using both of these phones side by side and putting these to the test in dozens of real world situations to figure out which flagship smartphone is the better buy. And so in this video, we'll be comparing these two phones based on video test, photo test, feature comparison, and of course, real world experience. Hey, welcome back to the channel. For anyone new here, I'm Mike O'Brien, and if you haven't seen my videos before, I am pretty brand neutral. I'm not a fanboy, I'm not a hater, I use an iPhone, I use an Android, and I want both these phones to succeed because really they're both very impressive phones. But which one is actually the better phone depends on, well, you'll see throughout this video. Honestly, it's been really hard to use the Pixel 6 for the past couple days and not be allowed to share my experiences, so I'm really excited to show you now the photos, the videos, and how similar or different these phones actually are because while they both are really impressive they take drastically different approaches to some of the same problems so with that being said we're going to cover several different categories in this video but i want to start off with a feature comparison because before we even talk about the hardware the features are a huge selling point so let's start off with the Pixel. Being that Google is historically a software company, it's absolutely no surprise that Google packed this thing full of software features, including hold for me when you're on a phone call, you can do call screening as we've seen before, but now we also have even more accurate uh, real-time translations and transcriptions on here. And besides all of those features, which we'll talk a little bit more in a second, we also have a lot of other camera features, including face unblur. So if you take a blurry photo, you can unblur that, which is very impressive. You have motion blur, which does just the opposite. If you take a photo and you want the background to be blurry, you can do that. We've got magic eraser to remove items that you don't want in a photo. We can double tap the back to open Snapchat. We've got real tone, a lot of other things in here. As far as the camera goes, this is probably the biggest update to any phone camera year over year that we've ever seen. And of course, you're going to get all those traditional Pixel features as well, such as identifying music around you at all times, touching and holding the power button to talk to Google Assistant. It doesn't have the squeezy sides, but you know that's we haven't seen that in a couple years anyway. And now this is also running Android 12, which has the new Material U design, which honestly, I really do like. Some people didn't like it, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. And once you get used to it, it feels much more welcoming and, and, and more usable. You don't have a lot of noisy things. Everything's exactly where you want it to be, but somehow still very customizable as well. So overall, software and features on the Pixel 6 are pretty fantastic. And I talked more about this in my entire full review of the Pixel 6, but again, a lot of features. Now, on the flip side, as far as features go with Apple, there's not really anything that new or exciting on the iPhone 13 versus the 12. We still have MagSafe, we still have the ecosystem with iMessage and FaceTime and AirDropping and all the really solid fundamentals that people love about iPhones. Something that I think the software does a little bit better on the iPhone, which of course this is very ambiguous, not everything's very clear, but, but app tracking and transparency, I think they do a better job of letting you know who's tracking you and with what and giving you more controls over that. Of course, Google is definitely improving and so maybe in a couple months this might be different, but at least right now, I think that's a slight edge the iPhone has. But otherwise, as far as software goes, the iPhone is very traditional. It's something we've been seeing for a long time. A lot of the features just kind of slowly build up with widgets and other things, whereas the Pixel feels like a more drastic redesign and the features are, in my opinion, more fun, more exciting because you don't see them on a lot of other phones. And just as a side note to anyone new here, a sub to the channel would be awesome. On top of that, I actually have a full review of both the iPhone 13 Pro and the Google Pixel 6 Pro. I'll link those down below and they covered all the nitty gritty details. And we can't talk anymore about these two phones without talking about the next category, the design comparison. These two phones tackle a lot of the same problems, but they do so in drastically different ways. From a boxy design to a round design, from face ID to fingerprint sensor, they just do things very, very differently. And looking at the designs overall, you'll see the Pixel is much rounder. And because of that, it makes it feel a little bit smaller, which I think is probably a good thing. You get a very massive display there with no notch on the top. You do have that fingerprint or you do have that hole punch camera on the top, but otherwise it seems to have thinner bezels because it rolls over the edge a bit. And the overall design of it from the front gives you a fantastic media viewing experience. The more squared off edges all the way in the corner give you less of like a cutoff on the corner of your videos. And so as far as viewing media, I think the clear winner is definitely the Pixel. Now, the iPhone, however, I think is more grippable. 
The boxier edges on here, I think look really premium. That really high gloss finish on there and with the matte back to contrast on the, on the back of the phone, like I think the premium looking and feeling design of the iPhone is definitely very appealing. Which is not to say the Pixel doesn't look good. I think the Pixel is extremely recognizable. I think it's a fantastic design as well. But you know, as far as which phone just feels more premium in my hands, I think it kind of has to be the iPhone. It's a little bit more dense, even though they weigh very, very similar weights. The iPhone just feels a little heavier and has that more metallic exterior, which you know just gives it a slightly more premium aesthetic in my opinion. As far as the signing in, I think this is interesting. So Face ID and fingerprint sensor have both been around for a while. Face ID right now is a little bit more secure than the optical fingerprint sensor on the Pixel, but all things considered, you know, the security is not a massive difference there. And I actually did a survey on my channel a couple days ago, and 81% of people said they preferred fingerprint sensors. Maybe that's because of masking in the past year, like if you have a face mask on, Face ID obviously doesn't work. But on the flip side, if your hands are wet or if you're doing other things, like Face ID is also very convenient. So which one's actually better? I think it's very interesting that a lot of people chose fingerprint sensor. I could definitely go either way, and that's definitely a fundamental difference with these phones. But leave a comment and let me know which of those two you think is better. Now, some other real subtle differences with these, of course, the buttons are on different sides. So on the Pixel, you have the button, the power button is above the volume rocker on the same side, whereas on the iPhone, you can kind of have opposite sides, which for one, makes it more easier, like I think it's easier to use them, but the downside is every time you take it out of your pocket, or at least for me, I end up taking a screenshot. Additionally, you do have that, that little switch, that classic iPhone switch to go into silent mode on the iPhone. That's a huge advantage. I wish more Android phones did that, like how all well, the OnePlus phones do, but as of right now, unfortunately they don't iPhone also has MagSafe, which is great for wireless charging. You could snap it onto things like in your car, for example but it doesn't have reverse wireless charging, what the Pixel does have. The Pixel can charge your earbuds or, or any other device, like for example, another phone with the, back of this, with the back of this phone. Now, we know iPhone is capable of doing that, but at least right now, they're not letting you do that. And of course, a huge difference is going to be on the bottom where you have USB Type-C on the Pixel, which I think is a huge advantage over the Lightning on the iPhone. Lightning is something that is already fading out. You don't see it on like a lot of other iPads and devices made by Apple themselves, whereas USB-C is the new standard. You see it on pretty much every device out there. So as far as the overall design goes, it really depends on what you're looking for, but they both do a really solid job. The Pixel has more things that I really like about it, but the iPhone definitely has more of a premium feel. And with that being said, let's get into probably what is the most interesting comparison between these, which is the camera comparison. Of course, these both have three cameras on the back, a telephoto, an ultra wide, and a wide angle, and they have the selfie camera on the front, and they do things very, very differently. They both focus heavily on computational photography, but for a long time, Pixels have not been good at video until the new Tensor chip on here allowed them to really step things up, and you'll see in this video test, they do a much better job than they used to. So taking a look at the photos, the Pixel photos look really realistic, but the iPhone photos are more vibrant and fun to look at there. You can see outside, again, very realistic. The iPhone photo looks more fun, but sometimes becomes a bit cartoony. In, in full light right here, you really can't tell much of a difference, like a blind test probably wouldn't show you much. The ultra wide looks similar on both of them as well. Unfortunately, with telephoto, the Pixel did overexpose this a bit versus the iPhone, which nailed it. And when you zoom in to 15X on the, or 20X on the Pixel versus 15X on the iPhone, still really good. Now, the Pixel does not have macro mode, whereas the iPhone does, that's a huge advantage there. And looking at other photos, you can see in general, the iPhone has warmer photos, while the Pixels, I think, look more realistic, more true to life. And they also were able to capture more light out of the shadows, as you can see here, with these early morning sunrise photos. And they're also, again, a little bit less warm than the iPhone photos. It comes down to preference, though. In the night photos, however, the Pixel does pull ahead with a little bit more light. The front-facing camera, I think the iPhone does a better job with video, but the photos, especially in a really high dynamic range setting, the iPhone kind of struggles with that for some reason. So with portrait mode, the iPhone does more softening while the Pixel makes it sharper, and on the front-facing cameras, you can see there is a little bit more noise in the Pixel photo. So which one's better? Well, it really comes down to preference. Both these cameras are really fantastic, and with the adjustments of settings, you can easily adjust any white balance or exposure to look exactly how you want. Now, next, let's go into the video, and I think here you'll see more of a difference between these phones, but I want to point out there are also feature differences where the iPhone has cinematic mode, which is honestly really cool to have. The Pixel has four different stabilization modes, which I think is also very practical to have. 
All right, so this is a front-facing camera test with the iPhone 13 Pro, as you can hear right now, as well as with the Google Pixel 6 Pro, as you can hear right now. These are both able to shoot 4K, so leave a comment and let me know which of these looks better and which of these sounds better. Now this is a video test with the iPhone 13 Pro and with the Google Pixel 6. You can see they both focus very quickly. Honestly, really good color. The Google has, uh, the Pixel has a little bit more of a natural blur going on here from that very large aperture. But you can see they both do a pretty good job stabilizing as I walk around. Honestly, the Pixels have really come a long way. Of course, we can also zoom in and out. So if we go out to Ultra Ride, uh, it's actually 0.5x on the iPhone and 0.7x on the Pixel. And of course, we could also zoom all the way in. So this is 4x on the Pixel right here and 3x on the iPhone. Of course, you can zoom in further, but after that, it becomes largely digital zooming. Now, as far as the specs go on these phones, there's some things that are really hard to compare, like the A15 Bionic chip versus the Tensor chip. Like you can go and look up benchmarks and it really depends on what you're using them for. Realistically, they're both very fast. And one thing I noticed is that when you take a photo, it definitely takes an extra beat to process it on the Pixel. Maybe that's because they're doing more computational stuff behind the scenes, or maybe it's because the A15 is faster. It's really hard to judge that. Similarly, you have a lot more RAM on the Pixel, but again, iPhones treat RAM a little bit differently, so it just, things like that don't really compare well. But what does is the overall storage on these devices. The Pixel comes with 128, 256, or 512 gigabytes. The iPhone, you can choose those three options or up to one terabyte, so if you really want that extra storage on here, a full terabyte on your phone, I mean, that's really impressive. Another thing to really note as far as specs go, well, not necessarily specs, but the ecosystem is going to be a big part of the iPhone. So even though like connecting with a lightning cable is not the most convenient, you can also do air dropping and things like that, which, which does make it a lot easier. And granted, Android's coming a long way and they do have equivalents, like they have their version of AirDrop, which is nearby share. They have RCS messaging. They've got, you know, a lot of the stuff that Apple has but unfortunately in the United States, just not as many people are using RCS messaging versus iMessage. So that's definitely an advantage for the iPhone. Now the Pixel 6 Pro has the advantage of being $100 cheaper than the iPhone 13 Pro and even more discounted from the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And it has some other more subtle things as well. So Bluetooth 5.2 versus 5.0, a subtle difference, but you know, if you're looking for the longevity of like earbuds and keeping up with stuff like that, that's gonna make a difference. As far as charging goes, it's kind of a trade-off here. You get 30 watt charging on the Pixel, 23 watt on the iPhone, but when you're doing wireless charging, the iPhone has faster wireless charging. And one of the big ones for me as an earbud reviewer, I mean, I love audio quality, and that's something that's always going to be a bigger advantage on, on Androids versus iPhones. You get higher quality codecs on here to listen to music with more detail. You can have aptX on here, and it's very easy to use now uh, with the Android 12 update on here, whereas on the iPhone, you're just gonna be using AAC. And one of the big exciting things about the Pixel this year was their new in-house silicon, the Tensor chip. And really the new components were related to photo processing, things like that, but, but really the big benefit here is that now they're able to offer much longer update spans. So instead of using a Qualcomm chip and they had maybe three years of updates, they can now offer like five years of updates, which is more on par with what the iPhone does. So if you buy either one of these, you can expect that they'll be supported for a very, very long time. On top of that, they both have the newest operating systems right now, which as I said, iOS is, is pretty well rolled out now, but Android 12 is something that is pretty exclusive here. And as far as other Android devices go, this is always going to be getting updates much sooner. So really in conclusion, both of these are incredible phones. I think my opinion is sort of opposite of what you may expect though. So I prefer the overall hardware of the iPhone, but the software of the Pixel with a couple exceptions for each. So the iPhone software, I would say is only better when it comes to integration and security, whereas the Pixel's hardware is better when it comes to media, to media watching and charging, specifically reverse wireless charging. But other than that, I think that the software on the Pixel is just more fun. It's also more welcoming. And with the material you design, it just feels more like a usable phone that, that doesn't really burn you out as much. And so I also prefer the cameras on the Pixel. Personally, I just think that that style looks a little better. I love how you have the customization right in the camera app. It's just a little easier uh, to not have to go into settings to change anything. So camera app and photo abilities, I think the Pixel kind of edges that out a little bit for my personal use, but again, that is really an opinion-based one. But the iPhone, however, I would say is definitely more of a solid premium feeling phone with a beautiful boxy design. I love the matte back, very durable glass. And I think the buttons on here, something I didn't mention earlier, the buttons also make it feel a lot more premium. So they feel like a really nice tactile button, exactly what you'd expect that's smooth and, and it feels right. 
Whereas the pixel buttons, they feel like maybe they might have chosen the wrong tack switch. Like it's a very loud clicky button and it makes it feel a little bit more like a budget model phone, which of course it's not when you're using it, but the buttons, I wish they were a little bit more in line with what we have on the iPhones with that tighter tolerance and that more subtle tactile feel. But then again, you know, there are trade-offs on either side. So overall, which one's better? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. Leave a comment below and let me know if you're on team iPhone or on team Pixel. Which of these phones do you think is better and why? If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. As always, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time in my next video, which is actually gonna be right here, my full review of the Google Pixel 6. I'm releasing both of these on the same day, so don't forget to watch that video next. I have a lot more details that I didn't cover in this video.